Are you serious? <clears throat> Are you serious? Guys, I'm excited about the fact that it looks as if the war of North Korea, South Korea is a finally officially over. I mean, my whole life, those two have been at odds. My, grand, my uh, uncle fought in the Korean War, and to think that it's finally come to an end is really, really, <laughs> just really, I'm happy. Okay, I'll be honest with you. Unbelievable. Uh, it happened yesterday, though. Kim Jong-un did meet with President Moon of South Korea, and they crossed each other's uh, boundary lines into each other's country. They sat down and had a meal together. They planted a tree together. They held a press conference together. They embraced and they declared peace. Uh, it's unbelievable. And denuclearization for the entire continent, the entire peninsula of Korea. I, I said continent. I meant peninsula. There will be no war. No war is what they are saying. Uh, North and South finally agree. Complete denuclearization of the peninsula. And at their first summit in more than a decade, the two sides announced they would seek an agreement to establish permanent and solid peace on the peninsula. The, the declaration included promises to pursue military arms reduction, cease all hostile acts, turn their fortified border into a peace zone, seek multilateral talks with other countries, such as the United States, and in their first ever press conference in front of the world's media, Kim Jong-un said, we are one nation. We cannot be separated. We share the same blood. We are living with each other. We are brothers. The Koreas said, they hope the parties will be able to declare an official end of the war by the end of this year. Unbelievable. Kim Jong-un met with South Korean President Moon in a southern side of the demilitarized zone in the border truce village. And they made history as the first time ever that a North Korean leader crossed into a South Korea since the end of the Korean War in 1953. The leaders displayed signs of unity and peace as they shook hands on both sides of the border line. Kim Jong-un signed a guest book at the Peace House in which he wrote, A New History Begins Now, referring to the missile test. Kim joked, We won't interrupt your early morning sleep anymore. Kim offered to visit South Korean presidential mansion after Moon suggested more summits. The pair have planted a commemorative pine tree from 1953, the year the Korean War Armistice was signed at the Border Truce Village. The uh, countries have agreed to the complete denuclearization of the peninsula and hope to declare war officially over by the end of this year. An unbelievable display. An incredible situation is developing, folks. And you got to give President Donald Trump a lot of credit because if he hadn't used his peace through strength doctrine, if he and, and stop all the appeasement and force the parties to the table, and uh, it's 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 actually miraculous. Trump will be visiting, and Trump will be actually meeting with Kim Jong Un very soon, in just a few weeks, and uh, it is historical what's taking place right now. He made history as he met with the rival South Korean President Moon in face-to-face -face talks on the southern side of the border. President Moon said the two countries would work to reunite the families who had been separated by decades of long conflict, as Kim did, what his father and grandfather never managed. The dictator said his heart was throbbing as he became the first North Korean leader to cross the 38th parallel since the Korean War ended 65 years ago. The two heads of state had serious, frank discussions on the topic of denuclearizing the peninsula of Korea. 
during their first meeting on the southern soil in more than six decades. Kim Jong-un even quipped about his missile test, saying he wouldn't disturb the South Koreans' early morning sleep anymore. Both parties are drawing up a joint statement due to be announced together at the close of discussions, which will be followed by a dinner, which would also be attended by Kim Jong-un's wife. Uh, Also, uh, the wives did come and uh, they stopped for photos together with their wives. They planted a tree. They signed a plaque, a commemorative plaque at the location. They had lunch together. They walked and talked together. They uh, embraced. They held hands, uh, shook hands, and held hands of of, uh, peace. And uh, when they met the smiling leaders who seemed on the brink of war months ago, shook hands, uh, and, and held and stood next to each other side by side. It was uh, it was stunning to see, really. But uh, finally, uh, this it's incredible to think that Kim Jong Un's getting a chance to be a player on the world stage. He's going to get a chance to no longer be this villain, but to make himself look bigger in the eyes of the whole world. Kim Jong-un's sister actually came and joined at the table as well. And uh, so just an amazing situation, really, to be quite honest with you. Quite an amazing situation took place uh, yesterday. And we'll wait and see what happens when President Trump will also be entering this world stage. Trump has really set this up, but I think Trump's done a good job also by stepping back now and letting these two guys work it out. I think it's great. Uh, Let's hope and pray that they will sign the official document that the war is over between their two countries and they will start the process of reuniting families and even maybe start um, visiting one another's countries. And now, let's talk about why this happened. Trump was strong. Trump had built a blockade. Trump had military ships setting just off the shores. Trump has put a squeeze on the Chinese over trade. You'll see. Trump will not put the tariffs on China. Not like he was going to do. Uh, he'll back that off. He'll, he'll do a little bit, but not, not, not like he was going to do. That was part of the squeeze to bring the Koreas to their knees, to bring uh, North Korea. And, uh, and so also, let's be honest, Kim Jong-un's test site that he says he closed collapsed. That last bomb he blew up, that hydrogen bomb blew the mountain up. The mountain collapsed, it caved. And let's also be honest, radiation right now is pouring out of that place. It's coming right out of the hole in the the mountain and the winds are blowing toward China. This is still a major problem. Kim Jong-un's looking for a way to get out of his country to be allowed to go and visit other nations. You'll probably see him on Jimmy Kimball or somewhere or 60 Minutes. You're going to start seeing Kim Jong-un by sometime next year traveling the world and and being hailed as a peacemaker or, or, or something, you know. Now let's hope that he lets these people out of their prisons, that he starts allowing people freedom of religion, and, uh, you know, start, stop the human rights. But their people are hungry. Their people are starving over there. And uh, he's going to have to open up his borders to allow Western societies to come in and start to recultivate their culture and food. And, 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 and he's, he's, he's run out of gas. And see, there's nobody else paying for it no more. Uh, the Barack Obamas of the world are no longer sending checks. The George Bushes of the world are not going to send any more checks. Bill Clinton's not going to send any more checks. And the communist regime of China can't afford to send any more checks because of the threat of tariffs put on them. And so North Korea uh, has been brought to its knees. And the Trump doctrine of peace through strength has worked. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy 
when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh. Are you saved? Are you serious? 